Budapest almost 24 hours later. And now we're gonna go meet the Viking crew. Come join us for our seven night Viking River cruise down the Danny River to explore the Christmas markets. This is where we boarded in Budapest, Hungary before taking off for Vienna and then making our way down the Danube to the small towns of Krems, Passau before ending in Regensburg, Germany. Our ship has a total capacity of 190 passengers over three floors, which does make the experience small and intimate, especially compared to ocean liners. This lounge was the main area that the passengers hung out in, which did make the ship feel small at times. But we do have two dining spaces, including this veranda outside. But most of the times, especially in bad weather like ours, you do spend majority of your time in this main dining room. Make sure you stay to the end to see how I rate the entire journey. All right, so we finally made it onto the ship. It was a pretty smooth journey and we got a great room. With a balcony. With a balcony, yeah. Thanks, yo, yo She was the one who paid for these. <laughs> and then, yeah, you first for our first time. Ooh. Wow, look at our view. That's so cool. This is our first Definitely time best with the balcony. view from a cruise. All right. And then, and then, as you can see, the rest of the room is pretty small. It's pretty small. It's just a bed, basically. Yeah. It's but still cool. fine. Like two of me. Still fine. Uh, Everything you need. And then here is the bathroom. Actually, it's pretty spacious. Yeah, it's like a full size shower. The bathroom is definitely bigger than like a cruise ship yeah. bathroom. Yeah. For dinner, there's typically one standard menu that stays the same with traditional items like salmon and steak. And there's one rotating menu of choices to that typically features specialty items like this paprika chicken local to Hungary. We made it to our first Christmas market. We're in Budapest right now. Okay, so we wrapped up the Budapest Christmas market and I think my overall sentiment is it was kind of commercial. Um, like for example, the, the mulled wine comes in paper cups instead of the little uh, mugs that you see. And it was nice, but it wasn't like warm or cozy or any kind of cute energy. It was more of like a flea market energy. We just woke up, we had breakfast. Look at this beautiful view. We're about to go on our excursion off the boat. They're all free. Uh, you just have to sign up for them. So we're gonna be going on a bus, checking out Budapest, and then we're gonna meet the boat um, on our way down to Vienna. So far, we feel like the cruise has been really well organized. Um, so we went on our excursion. Every room gets one of these ear pods. <laughs> and yeah, there were three buses for us, so you just get your ticket last night and then you show up to the right bus. And then um, we don't need to plan anything, basically everything is already planned for when we get here. Our first shore excursion of the cruise was a driving tour around Budapest before stopping at the Fisherman's Bastion, which you can see here, and it's like a scene from Game of Thrones. We also got to explore the Matthias Church right here, which is really unique because it has Islamic history from the Ottoman Empire, which has impacted the interior decor. All right, so now we finished the church and we are outside of a beautiful Christmas market. Um, and it's much better than the one from last night. this area ended up being one of our favorite stops on the entire cruise mainly because of how beautiful and picturesque this entire area was i mean seriously just look at this beautiful view of parliament we got the famous chimney cake which i don't know if you can see but it's smoking yeah, it's smoking 
Yeah. It's smoking. It took us a while. It was a 16 year old boy cooking it, but looks good. Tastes like a pretzel, a cinnamon pretzel. And like that, we're back. See ya. <laughs> See ya is how you say goodbye in Hungarian. <laughs> Similar to dinner, lunch also always had a changing menu at the top and an always available menu at the bottom. And then I got the carbonara. So now we are on the walking path. It's actually really nice. It's so quiet and serene, obviously, because we're on a river. There's not that many people here. We have about a few hours before the next like programmed event and it's just really peaceful. And the lighting looks pretty late, but it's actually two o'clock. The sun sets at 3.50 here. This side is Hungary, and that side Slovakia. This side is some people always hungry. <laughs> and for our afternoon sale, Viking programmed a really nice afternoon tea. And with no shortage of food, we went straight to dinner of crab cakes, risotto, and carrot cake. Morning from Vienna, day two. We haven't arrived yet. We went through a lot of locks at night, but it looks like it's gonna be another beautiful day. So we just visited St. Stephen's Cathedral. Um, the tour guide is not as good as the one yesterday, so clearly they are hit and misses. Um, but Vienna is much more crowded than Budapest was. There's a lot more other tours. All right, we made it to the Vienna Christmas Market. Look at all these ornaments, so cute. Make sure you bring cash. We weren't fully prepared with how much cash we needed, so we couldn't buy too many things. But I did buy one of these little houses. They're so cute and they're made in Lithuania, not Vienna. One house punch and one kinder punch. Kinder is, punch is non-alcoholic. Is yours alcoholic? And then house punch is, yes, it's hot red wine, rum, oranges, spices. And it's five 40 euros and then five on top for each, four. For each club. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. it too. So cute. So cute. We got our first wiener. This was a cheese dog. So it's not a bratwurst, but it has a cheese filling and it was 750 euros. Okay, so we just had lunch and we're off again to the Christmas markets. We are in Vienna for two days. Um, and we do have a free shuttle. Uh, you know, some questions that you may have <laughs> are, how old is the crowd? And the crowd is actually not as old as the, internet. Old, yeah. the internet will make you believe. It's, um, I would say there are a lot of like older families. So kind of like us where- yeah, Like parents with their kids. Adult, adult kids. kids, yeah. There's no kid babies, which is nice. Yeah, there's no children. I don't think there's anyone under at least 20. Yeah, But there's five. also- Plenty of people who are in Our their age. like late twenties, early thirties, yeah. but you don't really talk to them unless you want to. Unless you want to. I mean, everybody's nice. Everyone's from America. Vienna has multiple Christmas markets all around downtown, but the largest one was definitely outside of City Hall. We actually ended up going to a couple different ones, but we definitely preferred the smaller, less crowded ones. They basically have all the same things, and you have more options to try food, like this giant pretzel. made it back to the ship. So we don't mean to hate on <laughs> Vikings food choices, but this is an example. Their spicy beef chili has rice in it. What? That doesn't belong in chili.
For our second day in Vienna, we opted to do our own thing and called an Uber. We're at a Viennese cafe, Cafe Longbox. I got the Viennese whipped cream espresso. A sacco tort. What is that, limeade? Yeah, <laughs> limeade. And then a chai latte. All right, after a successful Viennese cafe experience, we're, we're going to Steven Plotz, which is the playa with the really nice shopping. Um, it's obviously, as you can see, a rainy, gross day, but it feels more like winter this way. For lunch, we wanted to try a local Austrian meal. I'm not gonna pretend and pronounce this one. I'll link it below, but we got to try local specialties. We ordered spetzel, an egg noodle dish, two different kinds of schnitzel, veal, and pork, the very famous bratwurst, and finally, Hungarian goulash. It was good. I would say eight out of 10. It was really cozy, so that really bumped up the experience. And then another Christmas market. <laughs> it's pretty much all the same stuff. We did actually go inside Shanbar Palace and were treated to some sort of ceremony afterwards. And now we're walking the gardens. It's kind of sad because we did come here about 10 years ago in the summertime and the grounds are just so beautiful flowers. It's still very beautiful, but instead of flowers, it's piles of dirt. This is what I mean when I say piles of dirt. Literal piles of dirt, but that's still beautiful. Made it to the top. Schönbrunn Palace is definitely my favorite place in Vienna, so definitely worth a visit. And now we're gonna take the metro back from Schönbrunn Palace back to where the ship is. There is a metro stop near where the river cruises dock. It's about an eight minute walk to the river cruises and we'll see how far it goes. After Vienna, we made a quick stop to the small town of Krems to see the Gottwig Abbey, an old monastery along the Danube that really produces a lot of wine. It was pretty neat, but we didn't do anything besides the monastery, so it wasn't anything spectacular. They did treat us to an organ concert though. Afterwards, we spent the rest of the afternoon sailing through what should be the picturesque Wachau Valley, but the weather was starting to take a turn for the worse. It rained for the rest of the night as we traveled through locks before finally arriving in Passau the very next morning. Passau was a charming medieval town at the confluence of three different rivers, so clearly a very valuable location for trade, but it was raining all day. Our walking tour also consisted of a gingerbread demonstration from a local celebrity, Mr. Simon himself. Good. It's, the hot dog is good. Mm, good. It's really good. The town of Passau definitely wins for feeling most Christmassy. There's a lot of cute little shops that line the, the city, which is very walkable and very small. And we're back on the ship. As you can see, they flattened everything to go under the bridges. We're dealing with some issues with how high the water is. So it's pretty cool. And then we just boarded through another ship. A quick toast before dinner, before we're off to German night. Ooh, we're here for the special German night. 
Each table has pretzels, a taste of Germany, rolls, beer, so cute. Because of the high water, we actually couldn't make it to our last port of call, Regensburg. So they actually had to bus us two hours to town. We were wishing for a white Christmas, but it just happened that it occurred on a drive to Regensburg. This is how high the water is. With that, our trip to Regensburg comes to a close. You missed the sandwich, but it was pretty tragic. And on the last night, the family ordered everything on a menu. packed up one last viking touch um, if you do your transfer with the company they arrange everything for you so you just put your tags out as for time and we have to wake up tomorrow and put our bags out at 4 30. my flight's not until 12. and now that the trip's over here's my review all right, when it came to the ship, we thought it was beautifully done, always clean, and the amenities were really modern and comfortable. Sure, it got small at certain points, but that's what you have to expect from a river cruise. Overall, 10 out of 10. I also want to say that it was fairly disability friendly. Uh, my father walks with a cane and he had a good time with keeping up with all the walking tours, but I will note we did not see anyone in a wheelchair on the cruise. We all had a great time with the staff as well. There were about 50 members on board, which makes the passenger to staff ratio four to one, which is kind of crazy. So 10 out of 10. Now the food is an area where we thought there was more to be desired. It was well portioned and fairly healthy, but just kind of bland and lacking any interesting flavor. So my family would give it a seven out of 10. In terms of activities on the boat, there were plenty of things organized for us, but they were all in the lounge. So we had tea time, we had some guest performers, we had a gingerbread making session, and we had plenty of talks led by our fantastic cruise director. But a little bit boring, and there was only really one to two things a day. I would give this an 8 out of 10. Overall, my family had a great time with Viking. They're a company that really doesn't make you think, and that was exactly what we needed on this Christmas market tour down the Danube. Let me know if you have any other questions on the trip, and I'm happy to answer in the comments, but otherwise, I'll see you next time.